The Sinseng Miwa Group of Samurai, who actually existed at the end of the Edo period. The Sinseng Mi is one of the favorite historical themes among the Japanese, and there are countless novels, movies, TV dramas, manga, anime, computer games, etc. Based on the Shinsengumi. Most Japanese know the names of the main members of the Shinsengumi. This channel will reveal why the Shinsengumi still fascinate many Japanese in the 21st century. It will be a bit long, but please watch to the end. The Foreign Wind Long ago, Japan had a policy called Sakoku, which means closed country. This meant that Japan didn't want to talk or trade with most other countries. For over 200 years, Japan kept its doors closed to foreigners. But even during Sakoku, Japan was not completely closed. They still traded with a few countries. These countries were China, Korea, the Ryukyu Kingdom, now known as Okinawa, and the Netherlands. But the trading places were very limited. One day, Big black ships from America came to Japan. They didn't come to Edo, which was the big city. They came to a place called Uraga near Yokohama. The leader of these ships was a man named Perry. Perry had a letter from the American president. The letter was a request to open Japan to trade with America. People in Japan were surprised and worried. They had never seen such a big ships with such powerful guns. The leaders of Japan had a big decision to make. Should they open their country or keep it closed? This event was like a strong wind from a foreign land. It made Japan think about its future and its place in the world. Why Japan had to isolate itself is explained in my other channel. Please see the URL in the overview section. Members of the Shinsengumi this is an introduction to the main members of the Shinsengumi. These members gathered at a dojo called Shinjikan, located in today's Shinjuku district of Tokyo. In the Shinjikan, they were taught a sword style named Tennen Rishinryu. In the late Edo period, Swordsmanship was somewhat like today's kendo, becoming somewhat of a sport. The Tennen Rishinryu wasn't considered powerful or beautiful as a sport and was often called a farmer's sword style. However, it was strong in real combat situations. Kondo Isami, who ran the Shieikan, later became the leader of the Shinsengumi. One of his students, Hijikata Toshizo, later became the vice commander. By the way, Hijikata's sister married a wealthy man named Sato Hikogoro 
who was a big supporter of Tennen Rishin Ryu. Kondo and Hijikata were said to have a very close relationship. Both Kondo Isami and Hijikata Toshizo were born farmers. In those times, it was difficult for farmers to become a samurai. Kondo started learning swordsmanship as a child, and he was adopted by his teacher, entering the samurai class. The Kondo family were freelance samurai, so life might have been tough. Hijikata, also from a farmer's background, wanted to become a samurai. He learned swordmanship at Shieikan while working at a merchant place, but the law prohibited non samurais from wearing sword in public. Okita Soji Another student of Tennen Rishinryu later became the leader of the Shinsengumi's first troop. There are no existing portraits or photos of Okita. Although many novels and manga depict him as handsome, there is no evidence of his looks. But he was friendly, cheerful, and loved playing with local kids. Kondo, Hijikata, and Okita were the core members of the Tennen Rishinryu group in the Shinsengumi. While there were other members, not all practiced Tennen Rishinryu. Still, these there were particularly close and shared a strong bond. The remaining members. I'll introduce the remaining members. These members did not practice the Tennen Rishinryu style, but they stayed at the Shieikan Dojo and learned other styles. First, the leader of the second unit was Nagakura Shinpachi, one of the few initial members who survived the Boshin War. Thanks to him sharing stories about the Shinsengumi in the Taisho era. We know now many episodes about him. Then, the leader of the third unit was Saito Hajime. Many people might think of him from the manga Ruroni Kenshin. As shown in the manga, he worked for the new government in the Meiji era. While Nagakura liked to talk, Saito was more of a silent worker and didn't talk much about the Shinsengumi. When discussing the strongest member of the Shinsengumi, the topics often revolve around Okita Soji of the first unit, Nagakura Shinpachi of the second, and Saito Hajime of the third. Many believe one of these three was the strongest. Lastly, the leader of the S unit was Todo Heisuke. He practiced the famous Hokushin Ittoryu style. He had many connections because of this style, and these connections greatly influenced the story of the Shinsengumi. What is Son no Joy? In Japan's Heian period, the nobility ruled 
is the emperor at the top. The imperial court centered around the emperor governed Japan. From the Kamakura period, samurai became more powerful than the nobility. The shogunate formed by the samurai took over politics. The shogun was at the top of this shogunate. Although the shogunate led Japan's politics, the imperial court with the emperor and nobility still existed. So, with reduced power, the title of Seiji Tai Shogun given to the shogun came from the imperial court. The shogunate also made laws limiting the emperor's actions. During the Edo period, the emperor had no political power, but was considered a special being who could communicate with duties. Most Japanese, including samurai, revered the emperor. So no means to respect the emperor. Joy means to expel foreigners from Japan. Even during Japan's isolation, the shogunate had limited trade. They knew about Western advancements because they met with foreigners. They knew foreigners were just like Japanese, not monsters. However, the imperial court in Kyoto had never seen foreigners and considered them frightening. Many Japanese also feared foreigners because they had never seen one. In 1853, Perry came to Uraga with four modern ships ready for action. He showed a strong will open to Japan, to the world. There are many interesting stories about this, which I'll explain in another video someday. The Zen Emperor Kome dislike for foreigners, few the anti-foreigner movement. But considering global circumstances and military power differences, the shogunate decided to open Japan. They knew about Western advancements because they met with foreigners. This led to dissatisfaction against the shogunate, turning into the Sonno Joy movement. The shogunate's decision to open Japan without the imperial court's consent angered the supporters of Sonno Joy. Eventually, the senior shogunate official Ii Naosuke faced consequences in 1860. It raised questions about the shogunate's authority. As a result, the shogunate's prestige declined and with the removal of a major obstacle, the momentum of the Sonno Joy supporters grew stronger. The plan of unity and the promise of exclusion. After the incident at Sakura Damon, the shogunate's reputation fell a lot. To recover, they came up with a plan. Marry the shogun Tokugawa Hidemochi to Emperor Komei's sister, Princess Kazu. 
The Shogunate's power was decreasing, while the supporters of the emperor were increasing. By marrying the two, they wanted to show the world that they were close and hoped to boost the shogunate's reputation. With foreign ships coming often, demanding to open the country, everyone had to unite. This policy is called unity of imperial court and shogunate. Emperor Kome said, if the shogunate promised to expel foreigners, he would agree to marriage. Even though they already had treaties with foreigners, this meant breaking them and sending foreigners away. It wasn't really possible. But the shogunate agreed in their eagerness to boost their image. So Iemochi and the princess cats got married, but in exchange, the shogunate promised the court they would expel foreigners within 10 years. Around this time in Kyoto, where the court was, the radical Choshu clan became very powerful and began to influence the court. They kept pushing the shogunate to expel foreigners soon, reminding them of their promise. The shogunate was in a tough, tough spot because of the promise they couldn't keep. But since they made the promise, they had to answer. So the shogun decided to get to Kyoto himself and talk with the court about the explosion. However, Kyoto was very dangerous at that time. People who supported the shogunate or wanted to open the country were sometimes in danger. Formation of the Roshi group Hiyokawa Hachiro wanted to create a group to restore peace in the chaotic Kyoto and protect the shogun. He wrote this idea to the shogunate and they agreed. So they started to recruiting people. Hearing this, Kondo Isami and others from the Shiei-kan dojo decided to join. Everyone was excited. Even ordinary people could become samurai and get paid. But when Kondo Isami and others reached Kyoto, they got a big surprise. Kiyokawa Hachiro gathered everyone and said, Our real goal is not to protect the shogun, but to support the emperor and expel foreigners. Many people were confused, but most agreed with him. However, Kondo and his group disagreed. They believed they should stay loyal to their original mission. Another person, Serizawa Kamo, also disagreed with Kiyokawa. Who was Serizawa? He was a former member of the Mito clan and had a strong personality. He was smart, but also had a rough side, which would later lead to problems in the group. Later, the group split. 
some went back to Edo, and unfortunately, Kyokao was taken out because he had tricked the shogunate. Kondo and Serizawa stayed in Kyoto. Using Serizawa's connections, they got help from Matsudaira Katamori, the leader of the Eyes clan. Who was Matsudaira? He was loyal to the shogunate and was in charge of keeping peace in Kyoto. With his support, Kondo, Serizawa, and others started a group to maintain peace in Kyoto. This group was called the Mibu Roshi Group, and they began their work in 1863. On the August 18th, political change. In August of that year, The Roshigumi had their moment to shine, known as the political upheaval of August 18th. To briefly explain the historical context at that time in Kyoto, the radical imperial loyalists of the Choshu clan were influential. However, It was rumored that the emperor started to disapprove of the Choshu. This was because the Choshu had given up on the shogunate, thinking they were unreliable and started advocating for the imperial court to take more direct action. While the emperor did wish to limit the foreign influence in Japan, he preferred the shogunate to handle it. In other words, the emperor hadn't completely abandoned the shogunate. This led to the emperor's growing dissatisfaction with the two radical views of the Choshu. To address this, the Eyes clan responsible for safeguarding Kyoto and the Satsuma clan, proponents of a stronger alliance between the emperor and the shogunate, secretly started planning to expel the Choshu from Kyoto. On August 18th, when the Choshu clan approached the Imperial Palace, they saw soldiers from the Eyes and Satsuma clans guarding it. These soldiers stated that they were now in charge of the palace's protection. On the Emperor's orders, And the Choshu were no longer permitted entry. Anyone who would oppose this setup would be opposing the emperor. So the Choshu and their allies could do nothing, leading to their exclusion from Kyoto. This event is known as the August 18th. Political change. Now, regarding the Roshigumi, they were working under the Eyes clan and were guarding one of the place gates. After the political change, their diligent service was recognized and they were granted the name Shinsengumi. Which means newly selected group. There are various theories about who named them Shinsengumi. It's interesting to note that the Shinsengumi name 
ordinary referred to a protection squad of the Eyes clan during the Middle Edo period. The Roshigumi adopted this name and became known as the Shinsengumi. Serizawa Kamozu Removal When the Shinsengumi first started, there were three leaders. Among them, Serizawa Kamo was the main leader. In fact, at the very beginning, the top person in Shinsengumi was not Kondo, but Serizawa Kamo. This was because he had connections with Matsudaira Katamori. However, unfortunately, Serizawa, who should have been the face of the Shinsengumi, began to act recklessly. He was known to be rough and had a bad habit when he drank. There are stories of him causing trouble, like setting fire to a merchant's warehouse who didn't lend money to the Shinsengumi. This made the Shinsengumi's reputation worse, which also affected the image of the Eyes clan who supported them. Due to various reasons, it is said that Kondo was instructed by Matsudaira Katamori to remove Serizawa. The method was simple. They took advantage of Serizawa's habit of drinking, and while he was asleep, they took action against him. With Serizawa's removal, the Shinsengumi, led by Kondo Isami and featuring figures like Hijikata Toshizo, became the group Japanese people often think of today. Rules within the group After Kamo Serizawa's removal, they established strict rules known as Hyokuchu Hat to ensure such incident didn't occur again, especially strict in upholding these rules was the fierce vice commander Toshizo Hijikata. The rules were simple but strict. Do not go against the leadership. Do not leave the group. Do not raise fund without permission. Do not sue without permission. And the most significant rule was that anyone who broke these rules had to face serious consequences. An episode that clearly shows how strict these rules were involves Yamanami Keisuke, who faced the ultimate punishment for leaving the group. Although not discussed in detail here, Yamanami was one of the early members from the Shieikan days and held a position similar to the vice commander Hijikata. Even though he was such a special member, he wasn't exempted from the rules. This episode shows how strictly the rules were enforced. There are various theories about why Yamanami left the group. Okita Soji had a close bond with Yamanami Keisuke. When Yamanami's escape was discovered, Isami Kondo sent only Okita to find him. It seems Kondo might have let Yamanami go if Okita hadn't found him. 
but they returned together. Even though others suggested Yamanami should flee, he declined and given their close relationship, asked Okita to assist him in facing the consequences. The building where the Shinsengumi stayed still exists today, and the room where Yamanami Keisuke faced his fate is preserved. It is now a private residence, so you can't visit, but pictures are available online. Check the link in the description if you are interested. On this channel, I share Japanese stories. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so to stay updated. The Ikedaya situation. The Shinsengumi, operating under a strict set of rules called Kyokuchu Hat, found their pivotal moment as the Ikedaya situation. Let's discuss the historical context leading to this event. As previously mentioned, the Choshu clan was expelled from Kyoto due to the political upheaval on August 18th. This weekend, the imperial loyalists, but some including those from Choshu, secretly returned to Kyoto to plan discreetly. However, the Shinsengumi responsible for Kyoto's security became aware of their movement. They captured a man named Furutaka Shuntaro who was secretly supporting the Choshu. Also, he ran an antique shop under the name Masuya. Suspicion arose due to unusual visitors. Upon investigation, they found numerous weapons and ammunition, which led to Furutaka being in intensely questioned. From the inquiry, a shocking plan emerged. On a windy day, they intended to set fire to the imperial palace, create chaos, target pro-shogunate figures like Matsudaira Katamori, and take the emperor to Choshu. Some believe that the Shinsengumi exaggerated this story to elevate their accomplishment. Loyalists were aware of Furutaka's capture, leading the Shinsengumi to anticipate a meeting among them. The Shinsengumi split into the Kondo and Hichikata Squads searched the city slowly. Eventually, the Kondo squads stumbled upon the meeting place. The Kondo squads positioned three members at the front entrance and three at the back, with only four people, including Kondo himself, Okita Soji. Nagakura Shinpachi and Todo Heisuke. They ventured inside. With Kondo Isamizu shout, We are on official business. We will not hold back. The confrontation began. This became known as the Ikedaya situation. Despite being outnumbered with just 10 men against an estimated 20 loyalists, the Shinsengumi had elite members 
インクルーディングリーダー近藤勇、沖田総司、長倉新八、アンド東堂平助、which contributed to their victory. A popular story from this event is 沖田総司 corruption due to coughing up blood, hinting at tuberculosis. However, it's believed he might have just succumbed to heat stroke or anemia. Nonetheless, Okita started showing signs of ill health from this point. The aftermath, the Shinsengumi subdued and captured a number of individuals with reports suggesting they notarized around seven and detained twenty-three suspicious individuals. The Kimmon Incident In 1864, the Shinsengumi helped stop a dangerous plot in Kyoto. This made the Shinsengumi very famous in Kyoto. They did a great job, but the Choshu clan had some problems. They lost a political struggle and had a conflict. At the Ikedaya Inn. The Choshu clan tried to talk to the emperor to get their position back, but they were pushed away. Then there was a battle near the Hamaguri Gate between the Choshu clan and the Aizu clan. This battle is called the Kimmon Incident or Hamaguri Gate Rebellion. The Choshu clan didn't win. They were seen as enemies of the emperor. A big fire happened in Kyoto. The fire lasted three days and many people suffered. Houses in Japan back then were made of wood. And paper, so they caught fire easily. After the Kimmon incident, the government planned to attack the Choshu clan. This is called the first Choshu expedition. The next month, in August 1864, some countries were mad. At Choshu. The UK, France, USA, and Netherlands attacked with ships. This event is called the Shimonoseki Bombardment. The Choshu clan had problems with many groups. The Shinsengumi worked under the Aizu clan. So they were part of the Kimmon incident. They didn't have a big role, so they are famous for other events. During this time, the Shinsengumi were very active in events like the Ikedaya incident and the Kimmon incident. It was a very important time for them. Also, A very strong man named Ito Kashitaro joined the Shinsengumi because of Todo and others. Ito Kashitaro Ito Kashitaro was the leader of a dojo of the Hokushin Ito Ryu, a major and respected school of swordsmanship. This style was quite popular compared. To rural ones like Tenen r i s h i n r y u As a master swordsman and an educated man, Ito was quiet accomplished. Moreover, he was handsome and even wrote waka poems. 
he joined the Shinsengumi, a group led by Kondo Isami. At this time, Kondo wasn't just a swordsman, he also had influence in Kyoto's politics. Kondo, however, wasn't deeply educated. He likely sought someone with knowledge to support his political endeavors. This led him to appreciate Ito Kashitaro's intelligence and assigned him the role of staff officer, essentially a newly created position to be Kondo's advisor. However, some might wonder, Ito studied at Sonjuku, which held strong emperor supporting beliefs. But the Shinsengumi was in a position of opposing radical factions, like the Choshu domain. This might seem contradictory. However, both Choshu and the Shinsengumi respected the emperor. It's just that Choshu believed in a world centered around the emperor without the shogunate, while the Shinsengumi respected both the emperor and the shogunate. Many intellectuals of the era believed that the shogunate was given the right to govern by the imperial court. So, protecting the shogunate was also a way to protect the emperor. While it's unclear how deeply the Shinsengumi members thought about this, they likely respected the Aizu domain, which supported the shogunate. As for Ito Kashitaro's beliefs, he might have initially been closer to Choshu's anti-shogunate stance. However, he joined the Shinsengumi, possibly due to their rising influence. But there were differences in their beliefs, and in the future, Ito might face challenges within the Shinsengumi because of this. Imperial Tomb Guards and the Abura no Koji Incident During its prime, the Shinsengumi stood as a formidable force. Yet as time progressed, they began to be outpaced by the changing era. The once adversarial Satsuma and Choshu clans forged the Satsuma Choshu Alliance, presenting a united front. Oblivious to this alliance, the Shogunato instigated a conflict with Choshu. With the backing of their alliance with Satsuma, Choshu acquired modern weapons and unexpectedly defeated the shogunate forces. This event signified the decline of the shogunate's power. Contrasting with the ascending influence of anti-shogunate forces such as Satsuma and Choshu. Amid these changes, the Shinsengumi owing to their roles in significant events like the Ikedaya incident became direct retainers of the shogunate. For Kondo and Hijikata, originally 
from lowly background. This advancement was monumental, so it came with the immense responsibility of upholding a warning shogunat. Ito Kastaro forcing. The shogunat's downfall sought to dissociate from the Shinsengumi. Aware of the Shinsengumi strict rules, the Kyokuchu Hat, which required members to commit to seppuku. If they wished to leave, it formed the Imperial Tomb Guards, Goryo Eji, as a strategic move to exit without facing the dire consequences. This new group's main responsibility was to protect Emperor Kome's tomb. Several members, including Saito Hajime and Todo Heisuke, opted to follow Ito's lead, with Todo having previously introduced Ito to the Shinsengumi. However, the suspicions of Kondo and Hijikata regarding Ito's motives were not quelled. They believed that Ito's true intentions veered towards the anti shogunate This set the stage for the inevitable clash between the stanchly pro shogunate Shinsengami and the Imperial Tomb Guards. Amidst circulating rumors of Ito's plans to assassinate Kondo, Kondo took primitive action after a seemingly amicable drink with Ito. The latter was ambushed on his way home and killed. The Shinsengumi's bold move to leading Ito's body out in the open served as a direct challenge to the Imperial Tomb Guard. When the guards approached to retrieve the body, the Shinsengumi was ready, resulting in fierce conflict. It's worth nothing that while many members left the Shinsengumi to join Ito, Saito Hajime covertly served as a spy for the Shinsengumi within the Imperial Tomb Guards, relaying crucial intelligence back to Kondo and Hijikata. Battle of Toba Fushimi At a time when the world was changing rapidly, the Shinsengumi was facing internal challenges. Before a significant incident, the Shogunate decided to give back the political power to the emperor to avoid bigger problems. This act of giving back the power is called Taisei Hokan. Even after this, the shogunate, especially the Tokugawa family, still held considerable influence. Groups like Satsuma and Choshu, who wanted to end the shogunate rule, felt nothing had changed. They decided to take more direct actions. These groups took control of the imperial court by force 
and made the emperor announce a new rule called the restoration of imperial rule. This means the era of the shogunate was over, and a new government centered around the emperor would begin. However, the Shinsengumi, who had become officials of the shogunate, were drawn into a conflict between the old shogunate and the new government. This conflict was called the Boshin War, which started in Toba Pushin. Around this time, leaders of the Shinsengumi, like Kondo Isami, were unavailable due to various reasons, leaving Hijikata Toshizo to lead their forces. The Shinsengumi were skilled swordsmen, but they were up against a modern army with guns and cannons. Hijikata soon realized that the era of fighting with swords was nearing its end. Furthermore, the new government army raised a special flag, which symbolized them as an official army of the emperor. This put the shogunate and its supporters, like the Shinsengumi, in a tricky situation as they were labeled as rebels. Many soldiers didn't want to be a labeled rebels and switched sides. The old shogunate forces, including the Shinsengumi, suffered a setback in the Toba Fushimi battle. Later, when they returned to Osaka Castle, they found that the last shogun Tokugawa Yoshinobu had left without them. It turned out he had escaped to Edo. The Shinsengumi was heartbroken since they had relied on Yoshinobu and also the Aizu Clan's Lord. Matsudaira Katamori, who had also left, Despite these setbacks, the Shinsengumi didn't give up. They decided to follow Yoshinobu to Edo, hoping to continue supporting him. The Koyo Chimbutai After returning to Edo, the Shinsengumi was given a mission by the shogunate to secure Kofu castle before the new government army could. They were also given the name Koyo Jinbutai for this mission. While there are various theories about this, some believe that Katsukaishu, who aimed for peaceful surrender, of Edo Castle, wanted to keep the aggressive Shinsengumi away from Edo. Katsukaishu and others like him were hoping to hand over Edo Castle without conflict. The idea was to avoid a full-scale attack on Edo by peacefully giving up the castle. There is some debate over who actually ordered this. Some say it wasn't Katsukaishu, but Okubo Toshimichi. Regardless, the Shinsengumi now 
The Poyo Chimbutai were active in trying to secure Kofu Castle. They were a day too late. However, as the government forces led by Itagaki captured the castle first, the journey to Kofu Castle was also slow for the Koyo Chimbutai, partly because they were greeted with feats in their hometowns along the way. They eventually made a base outside Kofu, in a place called Katsunuma, but were quickly defeated in just two hours and had to retreat back to Edo. In the end, they were overwhelmed by the new government forces. The final days of the Shinsengumi members Members of the Shinsengumi returned to Edo after being scattered. Due to disagreements over future plans, members like the fifth squad leader, Nagakura Shinpachi, and the tenth squad leader, Harada Sanosuke, decided to leave the Shinsengu and form their own group. Nagakura and Harada were among the original members from the early days of the Shinsengumi. But by this time, the group had broken apart. Some members set up their headquarters in Nagareyama, Chiba, to regroup. Sadly, the new government soon discovered their presence. It was nothing the leaders like Kondo Isami and Hijikata Toshizo were using fake names because the new government knew they are real ones. So they thought it safer to go by aliases. Whether they believed using fake names would truly protect them is unclear. Regardless, Kondo eventually surrendered. There are various theories about what happened next. Some say Kondo, despite using a fake name, was quickly recognized by the government forces. Others believe he was simply captured. But ultimately, Kondo was detained by the government forces. Hijikata tried to help Kondo, but sadly, Kondo faced a sad end. Also, he became a samurai and wished to end his life like one he wasn't allowed to. About a month later, Okita Soji, who had been battling tuberculosis and hadn't really participated in the conflict, passed away from his illness, not even knowing about Kondo's fate. And even so, the conflict seemed like it might end after Edo Castle's peaceful surrender. Resistance against the new government continued. The battle moved to the northeast and finally to present day Hokkaido. By then, few original Shinsengumi members remained. Saito Hajime 
choose to stay in Aizu and continue fighting the new government. While Hichikata Toshizo went to watch, now Hokkaido to continue the fight. In the end, each member of the original Shinsengumi took a different path. Kondo faced a sad end. Hijikata went to Hokkaido. Yamanami Keisuke had to make a different decision because of internal Shinsengumi rules. Okita passed away from illness. Nagakura left after disputes. Saito stayed in eyes to fight. And others like Inoue, Genzaburo and Todo Heisuke faced their own challenges and destinies. Of the original nine Shinsengumi members, only two managed to survive the turbulent era. This shows how intense the period was and how fleeting the existence of the Shinsengumi was. The evolution of the Shinsengumi's reputation. Let's briefly discuss the changing reputation of the Shinsengumi. During the Meiji era, the Shinsengumi were viewed negatively since they opposed the new government. They were often portrayed as villains in literature from this period. However, by 1913, during the Taisho era, the story of Nagakura Shinpachi, the leader of the Shinsengumi's second unit, was serialized in a newspaper. This portrayal showed a more charming side to the group, speaking a renewed interest in them. This increased attention led to further research and a more balanced assessment of the Shinsengumi's history. The historical novels by author Ryotaro Shiba also played a significant role in bringing the Shinsengumi back to the public's attention, making them the popular group they are today. I, too, have read these books, and they played a part in my growing love for history. Today, the Shinsengumi remains a beloved group, often mentioned in various Context. The Shinsengumi can be compared to fireworks. They were young men, primarily from peasant and low ranking samurai backgrounds, who aspired to greater roles. They played active roles in events like the Ikedaya incident and eventually became officials of the shogunate. However, they couldn't keep up with the rapid changes and most of them met tragic ends. They were like fireworks that shone brightly but quickly fade away capturing people's hearts with their fleeting, useful energy. That's all for this time. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe and give a thumbs up. See you next one.